Hello, nerds. Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your weekend nerddom. It's been a couple of weeks, but we're back. And we're changing the format a little bit. This week, instead of just a talking head thing, I've got like chores and stuff to do around the house. I've got a, a kind of a messy house. It, it's, yeah, it's, it needs to get taken care of. So, we're going to vlog the news. So let's, oh, let's jump right into that vlog, shall we? Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commando War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. Yeah. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump in the news, let's hit in on the sponsor for the week. This week we're sponsored again by Mercari and by Poshmark. Uh, we are selling stuff on both Mercari and Poshmark. It's a lot of stuff up there. Pictures should be cycling on your screen right now. Uh, this is a necessary part of uh, living in this place that we are living. So we're trying to, to cull the the clothing issue. <laughs> so check it out. Links in the description to both the Mercari and the Poshmark sites where we are selling all of our stuff. And now let's jump into the news. It's a little noisy. Uh, first things first, we got to take the dogs outside. So let's talk music. This is the music episode. Uh, I didn't do that in the intro because we were all about changing formats in the intro. First thing we have for music though is a new song from Club. Well, it's not really a new song. It's the video for How to Shake Hands. And uh, I we talked about the song before when it when it was just the lyric video and I, I this the video itself is is good <laughs> it's funny it's i don't know that i've ever seen generally speaking clutch videos are just performance videos though they did have the um the periodic table song i can't remember the actual name of the song i apologize but uh that had like the dudes from jackass in it and it was pretty funny and or it wasn't the periodic table. That was anyway. One of the it was. They have some funny stuff, but most by and large, they're just performance videos. And this one is full on like parody video almost. It feels like uh, definitely a great song. I again, I'm really loving the production on this record so far. We've only got the two tracks that we're talking about, but just the 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 slight changes that they've done uh the the different tempos the the new tone on the bass is really doing it for me uh there is a link in the description to the video go check it out and all i all, the only thing else i have to say about this is neil fallon for president in 2020 that's yeah <laughs> Next up, we are talking about Slipknot. Uh, Corey Taylor recently did uh, an interview with a br British online show, I think it might have been. Maybe it was a, a publication that just has a YouTube channel. I'm not entirely sure, but I watched it. <laughs> you can find a link to it in the description. Um, he was talking, I mean, they, were, they asked him about all kinds of stuff, but specifically, uh, the thing we're talking about from that interview is the fact that he said the new record is, let me see if I can remember exactly how I said it, almost Iowa levels of heavy. So that's great. That's, that's, that's going to be awesome <laughs> if it's true. So, uh, if, if you, if you go back and kind of take a look at, at, at the progression that Slipknot has had, uh, the, Mayfi Can Repeat record was kind of all over the place. They honed it in a little bit for the self-titled, the first major label record. 
um, which was something new in and of itself. And then you get Iowa, where they've kind of distilled all of that chaos down into this heavy, incredible record. Um, and then into volume three, it, they started letting up a little bit. And All Hope is Gone was still a good record. I, mean, I, I, I really have nothing bad to say about real, really any Slipknot record, but by comparison, it's definitely not their heaviest record. Um, it's easily one of the more digestible records. Uh, it's heavier than the album before, heavier than volume three, but not still not even the self-titled level of heavy, so not close to Iowa level heavy. And then we get into uh, point five, the gray chapter, which kind of splits the the dichotomy a little bit more. You get you got some really crushing tunes on that, but there's also a couple of the really atmospheric, I guess is probably a good word to to, to use, um, which kind of for the overall feeling of the record makes it not quite as heavy, slightly heavier than the album before it. So we're probably on par with the self-titled as far as the overall quality of heaviness. But uh, the thing about Iowa is that's almost their their master work. And it was four albums ago now. Yeah. After, once this record comes out, it will have been four albums ago, which is over a decade ago. Uh, so if this record is approaching those levels of heaviness, and they have... Because what they have done, aside from not being as heavy on, on every record since, but they have become better songwriters. There's, there's a lot more interesting structure, there's a lot more interesting uh, harmonies and dynamics and things like that. And they know how to flow the overall feeling of an album a little bit better than when they did on uh, Iowa. So if this, is, if this is almost as heavy as Iowa, but still with those extra fantastic songwriting elements that they've developed over the years, then this could be their masterwork. This could be the best Slipknot record that we've ever heard. Uh, reports since then have put them in the studio at the beginning of 2019. I believe we've talked about that already, which means sometime by the end of summer, maybe into the fall, uh, we will likely be seeing a new Slipknot record, and that has me super excited. Next on our list, we're talking again about Sinsanum. Since we just talked about Slipknot, it makes sense that we're talking about Joey Jordanson, ex-Slipknot drummer. Uh, we're talking about his new band who, that he's in with one of the guys that used to be in Dragon Force, which is pretty intense. Uh, Sinsanum just to recap, is a death metal band, so it doesn't really sound like either of their previous projects. We have new, like not new NU metal, but new like American metal from Slipknot, borderline on new NU metal, and uh, also from Dragon Force we have like power, 80s style power metal. Uh, and so neither of them really really have that death metal feel, so it's really interesting. I know Joey has always had a tendency towards the heavy, but anyway, we're bird walking. What we're talking about is the new song, which is, let me consult the notes again. Uh, the new song is Sacred Martyr, featuring some female vocalist that I've never heard of, but uh, it's pretty good. I'm digging Sinsanum. I'm really digging the stuff that they're putting out. I'm, uh, I, I've always appreciated Joey's style. I've always appreciated the way we are outside, so pardon the noise. I've always appreciated the way he approaches songwriting. Like way back in the day when uh, they did that Roadrunner All-Stars record, uh, his projects were some of the some of the standout tracks on that album, though that whole album is really great. If you haven't heard it, you owe it to yourself to go listen to it. Uh, I really feel like it's the Roadrunner All-Stars. Um, it's bands that are different different members of different bands that are all on Roadrunner Records 
came into came together in these like super groups and put out one of the best heavy records you're ever gonna hear. So find it, it's great. The new Sinsanum song, link to the video is in the description. Uh, I don't know I don't know how to paint this other than it's a good it's a it's a I would put it above good. It's it's more than mediocre. <coughs> it's definitely if you're looking to scratch a death metal itch and you want something that falls in line but also exceeds expectations, then this is the place to go. So definitely check out Sinsanum. The, the record, Repulsion for Humanity, is slated to come out August 10th. That hasn't changed, we've talked about it. Uh, now we're talking about a new song. Let's kick over to the next bit of news. And the next bit of news, ooh, I'm really dark. Let's change that camera angle. The next bit of news has to do with Converge. This is one that really snuck by me. Let's boost this just a little bit so you can see my beautiful face. This one really snuck by me. Uh, I was not aware that there was still more more music that they didn't put out with the, mel or not Melancholia. Melancholia is the name of the tune we're talking about, but the, uh, the Best in Us, or yeah, Best in Us, I believe. Dusk in Us, woo! The Dusk in Us uh, didn't know that they still had music from those recording sessions. So Dusk in Us was the record they put out last year. Um, it's it's Converge, but in different, it's not as in your face as a lot of Converge. It's still got the, all the dissonance and it still has all of the uh, elements of a Converge record, but they've added to the formula and it's great. This four track EP called uh, Beautiful Ruin is more of the older style of Converge, less of the, di di the dynamics that they've added and more of the straightforward, we're gonna be esoteric in our lyrics and we're gonna be dissonant with our instrumental and just melt your face, shred your vocal kind of stuff. And it's not bad that this feels like a, a stylistic step backwards because it's only four tracks. Uh, every now and then you step into your old shoes and see how they fit. And that's kind of what this feels like. Definitely worth a, worth a listen to if you really like the, the dissonant kind of, uh, what, what do they call it, metallic, uh, metallic hardcore? No, that's not the, I don't know the subgenre. I'm really mediocre when it comes to remembering all the different subgenres, but uh, this is, this gets is, converged. They are their own subgenre. Let's just put it that way because yeah, they're amazing. And this is an example of why we, we liked them to begin with. Whereas the dusk in us is a, an example of why you should continue to like them. If that makes any sense. Speaking of new EPs, uh, Code Orange, a new band that I have really been getting into, their Forever record was nominated for a Grammy, which isn't really saying a whole lot necessarily because the Grammys don't understand the genre, but it's still worthy that, you know, the, the Academy or whatever it is that votes on that stuff recognized young talent like that, so take with that what you will. But they put out a new EP as well. This one's a three track, only two of which are new tunes. The other one is a remix of a song off of their forever record. Um, but the two new, t or the name of the EP, first of all, is The Hurt Will Go On. Uh, I haven't heard the other track, but the, one of the two new tracks is called The Hunt. Link to uh, that song is in the description. And... This it features Corey Taylor, so we're back on the Slipknot bandwagon. I rarely get off of it. But uh, features Corey Taylor on vocals. This is I, the, the thing about the thing about Code Orange that I super duper appreciate is they come from this hardcore punk rock kind of background, and they 
progressively got heavier. They actually started off as kind of a post-metal kind of sound, and then they got into the hardcore stuff, and they became part of the hardcore scene, wherever they're from. I don't remember where they're from. And then from there, as they've gotten more and more popular, once Forever took hold, and they started, and then, and then they signed with Roadrunner, um, which is probably how they got Corey on vocals for this, they have progressively added this uh, industrial element to their hardcore, which is a very interesting combination, one that I didn't know we needed, and now that Code Orange has given it to us, I don't know how we got through heavy music without it, because it's so dimensional. It's so interesting. It's so sonically interesting to listen to. And the 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 hunt is not an exception to that rule. The the production value on this, again, since they've signed with Roadrunner, their production value has just gone up. And this is a great example of that. There is one issue with this song though. Uh, the vocals, the main Jamie something, their their main vocalist, uh, the drummer for the band is also the main vocalist his vocal style, like if you see live videos of these guys, he swallows his microphone because reasons. I really don't know. That's that's horrible uh, the vocal technique. That's horrible microphone technique. And it's... It kind of shows in this recording, and actually in the last one that we talked about of theirs that they put out with the uh, Adult Swim record or whatever it was, uh, they... He sounds like he's gargling the microphone. He sounds like he's got a rock in his mouth. Or, I don't know, just the, the production on the vocals, I feel like, could be increased. But I feel like that's more of a style thing than it is an actual producer thing. So the producer just needs to grow balls and tell him how to use a microphone. Otherwise, this is a fantastic tune. Uh, there's no... I mean, there are areas that resemble a traditional metal song structure. There is also a lot in there that'll make you go, wait, what just happened in my ears? And and again, sonically, these guys are incredible. So check out the song in the description. Let's talk about what you think of Code Orange because I am sold. Ugh. And then our last bit of news is not heavy, actually. The last bit of news has to do with Finn Wolfhard's band, whom we've talked about before. The name of the band is Calpurnia, and the name of their new song is Greyhound, and I, I have an appreciation for these guys. I wouldn't necessarily say I love their music, but it's it's interesting that they are so young. It's interesting that these kids are doing this sound. Uh, it's, you can, again, the link in the description to the video, but uh, it seems like they're, they're sl it's, it, I, I feel like I, I heard it qualified as slacker rock. Uh, it has this definite like mid 70s kind of feel to it or 90s throwback kind of feel to it. Uh, so, 90s indie, which had that 70s influence as well. It's... It's interesting, man. Uh, I, just, I don't know what to make of it. So I'm, I'm handing this one off to you guys. Uh, are Calpurnia worth the effort to really get into them? Uh, the two tracks we've heard, the first one was kind of meandering and it felt like there was no point to it. This one I feel like is a little more pointed and has a little bit more artistry behind it. So let's have that conversation in the comments guys, but that is where we're ending this week's music episode. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place you can go to get all of your nerdy swag, or links to the social medias or other freebies are all up on the website, or you can check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. That's where you can go and support more directly. Uh, there are four tiers. It's all laid out on the website, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. The lowest tier is just a dollar a month that dollar does a whole lot so help a brother out check out generally nerdy on patreon patreon.com slash generally nerdy 
thank you guys very, very much for watching all the way to the end. <sighs> and I, I, I mean, if you're new, subscribe. If you like the episode, click the like button. Otherwise, before you do any of that, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here, and that is how we vlog the news. <laughs>